Yo, yo, what is up? How is it going, my co-host and wonderful brother, Javier Hase? How are you doing? Mr. Good. Elliot Lane, welcome everyone to another episode of Benzingas Cannabis Insider, our weekly show running Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Elliot, how are you yeah. today? I'm good, my friend. I'm good. Excited to be back. I'm bummed. I missed interviewing two awesome guests on Thursday. wasn't feeling too hot, but I know Mitch stepped in and did a killer job with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Mitch and Hobby. Uh, that's a that's a pair made in heaven. Ambar, Antonio, what is cracking? Uh, this is a cannabis show, Ambar. Uh, they will get to Fubo TV right after us, though, pretty shortly. We're going to chat about cannabis stocks. We're going to chat with one of the leading CMOs. I guess you can call them in the space. Yep. We're going to chat with one of the leading venture capitalists in this industry. It's a good half hour of cannabis here, man. Yeah, man. Crazy. It's it's a jam-packed show. So let's get to it. Let's do like two, three minutes of, of news. Then let's get Dre on. Uh, then Ross. Then more yes. news. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Drop your cannabis stocks in the chat. Drop any questions you have in the chat along the way too, y'all. Uh, this show is here for you. Participate. Avi, let's do Let's do it. What do you got first, man? Let's get it. I mean, big, big news out of the cannabis industry this week. I start with Leafly, you know, or Leafly, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, cannabis uh, information Leafly? platform, news, great platform. Uh, they're, they're going public via a merger deal with Merida Merger Corp. Um, and, and it's, it's that's expected MCMJ. to be valued over half a, half a billion dollars. Yeah. That's Very ticker MCMJ, if I'm not mistaken on the NASDAQ, that's huge. Exactly. Now that are they, the one. this seems like they're chasing yet also beating weed maps at the same time. Uh, so an interesting race there. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I kind of love it. Larger market gap for, for weed maps. Oh, for sure. It was yeah. 2.5 billion. Yeah. So this is like. I don't know. That's an interesting race there, but huge news with Leafly. This is uh, they they made their hat uh, on com legally compliant doing what they do. Uh, we all know that was an issue for several years, you know, with marketplaces like these. So uh, it's interesting to see now that they're they're SPAC. That that's awesome. So yeah. Javi, I want to talk a little legislatively. I know this wasn't on your news list, but uh, Justin, keep an eye out, y'all, with that resignation of Andrew Cuomo today, the Lieutenant Governor is very cannabis friendly. So let's mm -hmm. see what happens in that state. Javier, I, you may not have any insights right now. There may be something underway here, but to be honest, I mean, th this may be an interesting development. Totally. Yeah. No, no. I'm very excited to see, to see what's next. Um, and honestly, a kind of a necessary move, right? Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. After all the controversy. Back to finance for a couple more news items before we get Let's straight on. Curalief earnings. So C-U-R-L-F on the OTC, Curalief, one of the largest cannabis companies in the world. Beat on revenue but missed on EPS. Uh, revenue uh, came in at $312.2 million in the second quarter, uh, beating the estimates by over $4 million. 20% uh, sequential growth, 166% year over year pop in revenue. Strong numbers. You know, oh. I, I think, I hope people don't get too caught up on the miss. Canopy missed too. Several companies have missed. Um, but, you know, overall, I mean, that's incredibly strong second quarter. Yep. Overweight rating from Cantor Fitzgerald's Pablo Swanich following the, the earnings report. Price target slightly lower from twenty six fifty to twenty four US dollars. Hey, we got Brent Slava, Brent Slava in the chat. Nate Doherty, Christopher Diaz, what is cracking? You know, Nate, I've had a lot of requests for S and L recently. Let's do that at the end of the show. Stick around. We got some two great guests. Javier, anything else you want to mention? Mention before no, we get Dre on. I'm I'm very excited to have our first guest today. Our first guest is Andreas Norman or Newman, whatever you want to call him, according to him. He is the chief creative director at Jushi Holdings Incorporated, OTCQX, J U S H F, a stock we talk about consistently on the show. We always talk about their management, their lack of leverage, the the, the fact that you know they're they're not leveraged as a company, right? Uh, the, 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 you know, that they have no debt. They, they built something very big, very fast. Now, so, ju Andreas, yeah, just to add here, this is ticker J U S H F 
investors, J-U-S-H-F. I just want to mention that, Naren, if we throw that on the screen. But we're here for a specific purpose today. Dre, we're going to have you on back soon because uh, we have heard just so much about you. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think for good reason. But tell us, if you could, about you. Yeah. uh, (laughs) If you can, like, if if you can, in like... 30 seconds, yeah. We'll give him 30 seconds. Yeah, I'll make it, I'll make it fast. Do you have the popcorn ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Popping. So, so, yeah, my, my background is basically a traditional advertising uh, uh, technology brands and uh, as an artist as well, photographer and film director. So, so I basically covered the whole, not, not, not keeping it boring, covered the whole uh, universe of, of from entertainment to branding, very early adapter of branded entertainment. So, always. Trying to be ahead of the curve in 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 advertising and technology, and that's how that plays together. So um, that led me my 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 long road from from Germany to the UK. Ten years in the UK, Saatchi and Saatchi, big agencies, Silicon Valley, lots of tech startups, Los Angeles, entertainment tech startups, uh, and uh, finally as well, like always, always doing doing lots of photos and movies. I did a I did some mm-hmm. movies. I did some. Uh, did some uh, lots of lots of great photo projects with big rock stars, and that led me uh, to to a lot of exposure, in, in, in as well le- leading to that icon show. But as well led me to Jushi, and uh, mm. and 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 that background, specifically my my versatile background, is I think it's it's one of the reasons why I, why Jim Cacioppo, the CEO, and 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 the leader the leadership team in Jushi have chosen me to be their creative chief creative uh, officer, chief creative director. Of Jushi, uh, doing the brands, doing all digital, doing all transition from digital to to retail, etc. There, so with my team, so that's it's, yeah. it's it's been quite a journey. So we started like last in the midst of just before COVID, and and it's well deserved, right? I mean, just just for reference, Trey has worked with people from like Anthony Bourdain to the Foo Fighters, Mark Mark Ronson, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, Iggy Pop, the Arctic Monkeys. I mean, Johnny Depp, even 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 Pele, which I mean, I'm a fan of Maradona, but <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. You know, it's it's just like your 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 CV is crazy, right? I, I couldn't even remember the the, the the list, right? How do you land at, at Yushi, right? Or, or how, what 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 is it that you do? You know, how, what do you bring from from your prior experience? Yeah, so so it, it was so how, how there was a long story short. I was uh, working with the Queens of the Stone Age, and there was a point where we we're saying like. We want to have our own weed brand. We're in California, and uh, I was looking for partners. And then what happened is through like a mutual friend and investor in Jushi, I was introduced to leadership team of uh, of Jushi, Jim Cacioppo. We had meetings. Uh, I said before, uh, like we, we were we were dating for a while. We did some projects together as my team, which is just came out of another agency situation, which we sold to a French company. It was an agency called Idean, which focused purely on user experience and uh, customer experience, which perfect fit for them. The moment of Jushi, what Jushi was was in at that time, and we joined, and then focused straight on the digital and the the, the kind of the the frictionless connection between digital and brick and mortar of the retail stores of Jushi, and like raced straight with that digital backwind of COVID in, in, into the 2020, 2020, which was phenomenally successful for Jushi, as you know, uh, from all from all angles. That was the the story. Long story short, but. Um, so I think for the cannabis industry, my expertise, my talent, since I'm since I have, know the whole spectrum, is ideal because you you're in an environment now where you really have to where you have to hack the system, as you call it. You have to always every day is another day. There's new restrictions. There's new opportunities. You have to be super creative uh, to 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 get the best out of this this uh, barriers of entry industry, right? So which super excites me because I'm a I'm a. Uh, uh, I'm always challenged. I, I love the challenges, right? This, I, I'm not the guy for for the ever repetition. That's why you can see in my in my CV, I do lots of different things. Mm-hmm. Which I think today you have to do. You have to. You have to be. You have to. You have to like it's like a tripod. I always say, if you if you're a tripod, you always have two two feet to stand on, and one falls off, you still have two two fall off. <laughs> you have, to have one. So, and I think creatively, it's very it's very important that you not only do one thing these days. I think the the, the the, the entrepreneur with the with the business brain and the creative brain is 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 ready is 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 now really ready for specifically for that industry. Yeah, absolutely. So we're here specifically because one of your creative outlets is being featured this Friday. 
Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that was that's funny enough. We, we filmed that show uh, just before I, I I started in Jushi. It was like a, a team from the UK came over. Very uh, very cool uh, photographer, the the, the great uh, Gerard Mankovitz, who produced this show called Icon. Uh, who uh, this this photographer? He did like the original uh, uh, Rolling Stones pictures. You know, like when the Ro wow. Rolling Stones got twenty. 1967, where I was born, he was already shooting them, and he shot the most famous pictures of uh, Jimi Hendrix as well. So this guy has produ produces these shows, and he wanted to talk to photographers, like the, the all the, the the most interesting photographer, rock photographers, and music photographers in the world. And I'm very honored to be were, was part of this show, and that's airing now. It was already out in the UK on 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 Sky Arts, but now it's going big time, prime time. Friday night uh, PBS in in the United States here, so it's going to be exciting. Friday six o'clock in in, uh, in 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 Pacific time and nine p.m. Eastern time on PBS. Wow. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. Um, well, congratulations on the feature there. Obviously, well deserved yeah. with a long history of success. Uh, we are going to dive more into Jushi uh, upon your return here. Uh, let's we'll schedule it for a couple weeks down. We'll make sure we get much more about you, much more about the data, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, that you engage in with Jushi. That to me is such a huge point of conversation that I'd love to have with you. Um, but 100%. Javier, 100%. I, I mean, it, it's incredible what you're doing over there. Uh, Javier, any last questions? Uh, for I Drake? mean, just, just a quick shout out, uh, not this Thursday, but next Thursday, August 19 is the international day of photography or something similar. Mm -hmm. Uh, so great timing to brush up on some of your your history in photography. You know, uh, I am a fan of photography myself. I, I take film photos, and and I have followed uh, Dre's work uh, for for a few years now, and, and honestly recommend that you check that out. Thank um, you. So that you can also learn about what he's been doing and bring some good questions for next uh, for our next show with him, where we discuss you know a little bit about what he's doing at Jushi, but. Now, you know, if you could maybe share the one thing that you did for shoot, or, you know, for Jushi or at Jushi that was the most exciting, the I most exciting project you could you could undertake while working with Jushi. And th this might be very exciting. Yeah, so and <laughs> it might be surprising for you. So when I signed on, you know, when you you have a you're creative, and then you talk to a you talk to a like a Velocity Raptor called Jim Cacioppo. Uh, the CEO of Jushi, who you've had already as a guest, then you you cannot only like show up and do pretty pictures or like do nice brands and stuff. You have to you have to put money where your mouth is, and and so we were very excited to 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 launch. This was the most exciting thing in Jushi, I think, in the beginning to launch the, the digital uh, the online or pre-ordering platform in a time where it was just the right time. We hit mm -hmm. it. And it's now like it, it's. I, I always say the first day when we launched it, and I've never seen this in any other business. Was already we we had thirty thousand dollars in sales. Now our big days is up to, I think, it nearly touched nine hundred thousand a day, uh, oh which God. is where do you have that? I mean, this is and this is growing what? and growing, and we're fine tuning, we're dialing it in, and it's it's that was probably the most exciting <laughs> beginning. What an increase! Good. Exactly. Yeah. You need to you need to add value. Not only you know when you don't add value in a financial aspect, then you're you're not one of the guys. So yeah, <laughs> marketing and creativity is just there to support the sales exactly. of business. And that goes so. anyway. Let's goes with movies, photo. You have to actually there has to be some traction there as well. Otherwise, it's just yeah. just Amen. nice. Well, again, so Friday, PBS, 6 p.m. Eastern time. We can catch, and that's another great way to support World Photography Day. Six or nine. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Thank six, you. Six or nine p.m. What did he say before? I thought you said six. I think uh, six, was, uh, six in uh, in Pacific time and nine p.m. Oh, in, in Eastern six PT, time. Sorry. Nine I want to get in time in Hollywood. Was three, with my, that was my minutes. fault. Apologies. Dre, it's a pleasure talking to you. We're going to talk to you again super soon, but my goodness, mm -hmm. I cannot wait for that. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you much, guys. man. Wonderful. Right. Is it? We'll see, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, fantastic. Wow. What, what is great... our lineup? I don't know if you remember, but only two weeks ago, we spoke to Colin Hanks, also working with Jushi. Oh, yeah. That was the part. Incredible. Money Mitch, Chris Allen, Christopher Allen, sorry. Uh, also, I think I saw Chris Kachi up there. Agent five. I and mean, we have a killer audience today, y'all. Thank you for dropping so your tickers. Killer. Yeah, we'll touch on these after our interview with Ross. Let's go ahead and do it.
Russ O'Brien of Bonaventure Equity, also a book author. We'll get into that a little bit later during the conversation. A good friend of Benzinga's, Ross, welcome to Benzinga Cannabis Insider. What's up, Patrick, Ross? Javier, good to see you guys. Uh, it's fun to see what you got going on over here now. Finally, I'm way cuter uh, than Patrick. catching up. I'm way cuter than Patrick. This is Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they're they're brother. They're brothers. Yeah, brothers. It's, it's one that of those last things. name. You're not the first person to do that. Probably won't be the yeah, last. Probably won't be the right. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> just remember, you, I'm cuter. <laughs> you fine. you, you can call me Brian. I get that a lot too. So, oh, oh Brian, uh, it's our Irish heritage. But Ross, what's up, man? Tell us a little bit about you and uh, hmm. Bonaventure Equity. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Great to be here, um, Javier. Obviously, we've met before several times, and some events and things when those were part of the world that we used to live in. Um, so great to see what you have going on. So Bonaventure Equity, we're a venture capital firm focused exclusively in the early stage Series A investments in cannabis companies, uh, one to $3 million investments of DeNovo. Uh, we're on to our second $50 million fund right now. Uh, we have eight uh, portfolio companies already in place. And I've been a lifelong entrepreneur and, and, and doing venture investing primarily in healthcare for the majority of my career. So. It was a really exciting transition to putting our first committed fund together at the end of 2019 to invest in cannabis businesses. Um, we really believe strongly in the overlap of science and healthcare uh, in the cannabis economy and the transformation that's happening there. Uh, so we are very active, hands-on, early stage venture investors. Now, I have a question for you. You say you yeah. come from healthcare. Um, that's super interesting to me. Do you invest in the biotech kind of cannabidiol side of this yeah. industry? Um, is that your focus or is that just part of it? You know, it's, it's part of our focus. And I think what we found that's really interesting over the last um, uh, couple of years of being in the space is, you know, it was pretty broad in terms of what people thought of in terms of cannabis. And it kind of was all encompassing of all these different sort of sectors that were emerging. And there were a lot of, you know, new entrepreneurs and new investors that were, you know, caught up in this sort of Klondike mentality of this green rush, a term that we really uh, don't agree with whatsoever. I mean, we looked at over 300 companies before mm -hmm. we made our first investment and really went slow to go fast. Um, but if we look at some of the businesses we've been involved in, in the past, they are great analogies for what's happening in cannabis. I've been really involved in the compounding pharmacy world, for example. You know, we have controlled substances and in inventory in every pharmacy that we run across the country. It's regulated on a state by state basis that all have a different set of regulations. There's interstate commerce uh, rules and complexity and the FDA is coming in to regulate it. Fantastic. I'm curious what, just as a quick follow-up, we don't need to yeah. go down the rabbit hole of IP, but you know, I know that's been a, a kind of a point of hesitation uh, for investing in biotech cannabidiol companies is the access mm -hmm. to IP for that specific segment of sure. this industry, because you can't put IP on a plant. So, or at least not in the sense that you'd want to. Well, right? we, we look at it from a different perspective. I understand the IP and, and I'm sure you guys have talked a lot about, you know, the research now that's coming online with some of the new regulations just this last week of allowing you know, cannabis to be used for more research, which is really what we're looking at, right? So if you kind of think about, you know, incumbent pharmaceuticals, they all originate either from a plant basis or uh, biology or some sort of a fungus or something in nature. And mm -hmm. we don't see any difference happening. We just now have access to this new, you know, resource to develop natural based, you know, um, uh, I, I don't want to say holistic, but natural based, you know, foundations for medicine. Once those once, the, once that biology is replicable, and to answer your question earlier, that's why we're very bullish on the biotech side, and, sp and specifically in synthetics and, and being able to consistently produce those on a, a high quality basis, we think is gonna be transformative for the opportunity that's global. Great answer, thank you for that. <laughs> Where else are you seeing big opportunities, right, for, for investors, whether it's private equity or public markets, but, but which other sub-segments of the industry are you seeing uh, pop right now? Or, or do you expect to see them pop in, in the near future? Well, so we were a little more broadly focused in our first fund um, because we were really getting an understanding of what was happening around the space. And we've done well with all the investments and subsequently that performance is obviously what we are rolling into with this, this second fund. Um, and I think it's a couple of things. I think it's one more defining what we're not going to invest in going forward as much as defining what we will invest in. And so I think uh -huh. some of these opportunities have sort of seen their moment in terms of getting venture returns. Like 
Remember, Javier, we're a venture investor. We need to look for really, really rapid, high growth metrics from an early stage, you know, 10x cash on cash returns in three to five years. When you have some of these more stable, more mature elements of cannabis, let's take cultivation, for example, a lot of that forward looking value is getting priced in now, whether it's a private or a public transaction. So you no longer have that arbitrage of that real value growth if it's already being priced in the valuation today. And for us, the healthcare element of what's happening with cannabis has made that really a wide open space. And that's where we still see the more traditional venture investing, right? I don't believe there's private equity yet in cannabis. Show me a company that's got 10 years of audited financials and then we'll talk sort of private equity. But in terms of private equity and venture, yes, there is really, really great opportunities at an earlier stage, which is why we've remained focused on that seed series A stage. Definitely. Go ahead. And I was just going to say your thoughts on brands uh, in regards to where the industry is right now uh, and investing in that. I, I mean, we just had Jushi on, right? One yeah. would say a multi state brand portfolio as opposed to a multi state operator. But I, mm-hmm. I'm curious on, you know, what you look at and what you look for uh, when looking at brand portfolios or, or brands, if you will. So I think it would be difficult for us to get comfortable investing in brands again. Uh, we have a couple of you know sort of brands, but they're more symptomatic of a business having a specific market presence as opposed to creating a you know a brand. There's been some great look. We all know the cookie story, right? Like cookies is cookies for a lot of reasons, and that's really exciting. Yeah. Um, and Jushi's doing some really interesting stuff. There's no question. There's a, there's a place for it. For us, I think we've started to see a little bit more of a shift away from the stickiness that you see in brands in other sectors. So to back up for a second, we always talk about, you know, we don't want to invest in band-aids or we don't want to invest in just temporary solutions just because they happen to be in cannabis, right? Uh So for example, I had a company come to me years ago, they want to be the Brinks trucks of cannabis because nobody's transported cash between dispensaries. I said, well, why isn't the Brinks trucks doing it? They said, oh, they'll never be in it. Well, guess who's transporting cash now? Brinks trucks, right? (laughs) So that's not a sustainable company. That's a Band-Aid solution for a moment in time. And I think there was a rush into cannabis with a lot of brands, assuming that any brand would have some sort of resonance with with the the, the consumer. What we're finding is that interstate's very difficult. So I've always been bullish on the multi-brands as opposed to individual brands. You're not Uh seeing the stickiness at the, the, the point of sale. I mean, let's face it, the dispensaries, they just want product on the shelf, right? If you, they run out of your product, they either have their own white label product, their own brand or something else to replace it with. And we're also seeing a lot of sort of this, this pushback from consumers from some of the research that we're following, where a lot of these incumbent brands that you would think would be really strong, there's actually an aversion from the consumer, the really educated consumer that you think it would appeal to, looks at it almost as selling out or not being as authentic as they would they would like. So the, the, the counter's happening. And then we talk about we have a number of professional athletes in our universe that are investors with us and a number of, uh, you know, celebrities and people love the space. And we always caution them, look, you don't want to rush into this and be a founder just because you have your own brand. Right. And that's the big thing. Everybody says, oh, we'll look at, you know, 50 cent and, and vitamin water. Right. Well, 50 cent didn't start and go run vitamin water. He just sold his branding for equity instead of cash. Right. So when you start to get a lot of these individuals branding themselves with companies and also wanted to be operational, I think you've got to disconnect whether they have entrepreneurial experience in, in, yeah. in their background. I mean, this is tough to do. It's tough to do in any sector. We shouldn't expect it to be different in ours. Definitely. So, I mean, for instance, I know one of the, the companies in your portfolio is uh, Rev- Revolutionary Clinics. We had them on mm-hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago. I recommend you check out the show. Uh, for our audience, but then there's uh, province brands, right? And we're mm-hmm. talking brands, right? What's your investment thesis there? So I think, what, as I was suggesting, you know, we've matured our investment thesis around brands and, and looking at more as brands as being an element of the businesses going forward. So the 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 companies that are sort of driving that that we're looking at in Fund One that are now coming into Fund Two fit more what we were talking about earlier in terms of biotech, right? So we have a company, Nalu Bio which is producing a synthetic of a CBD compound. We have LeafWorks, which is two PhD female founders, the first to map the genome of the cannabis plant. So this goes yeah. back to your question on IP. Like if you look at agriculture as a, as a you know, decades long, you know, generational industry, they have all the science already to understand how to create IP around strains or, or genetics, to, you know, make pesticides that work, to be able to, you know, have science around crop management. We just don't have that yet, right? 
So we're building that sort of IP portfolio. And then the company T-Check, that's a, a spectrometer. It's a handheld spectrometer for, post, for potency testing. So those to us really shifted and, and helped us refine our aperture for the second fund to really focus on. Awesome. This has been great, Ross. Before we run out of time, I want to give you a moment to plug, if we, if we can. <laughs> hey! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> look at that! Look at that! Did I did yes. I mention I wrote a book? Did I? Uh, say <laughs> we're mentioning it now. So here, here's a funny story, by the way. It's the sister book to my book. I love it! I love it! I've got yours on my shelf. I just didn't bring it with. <laughs> Same publisher. <laughs> Want to start yeah. your own cannabis business? The other one is how to get your business funded in the cannabis economy by Ross O'Brien. So if you're looking to get your business funded, guess what? We're just giving away five of these. Five of them. Five. Let's do it. Oh, mama. So right. here's how you can participate. You got it. Share a link to this YouTube uh, video or live broadcast right now to social media. You got to share Benzinga Cannabis, that's BZ Cannabis on Twitter or Instagram, and tag us when sharing. On Thursday, we'll announce five winners and ship you the books in the US or Canada. Done. I love it. That's fantastic. I got to tell you, love the book, Ross. You gave this to me Thanks. when you were at our, gosh, Miami event. I think last, so. Yeah, I think that was Last right, time yeah. we had it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing those again with you guys. Yeah, that was oh, great. Oh, my God. Can't wait. New York City, uh, October 14th and 15th, obviously. Well, awesome. with the current mandates. So, um, but, real fast, what's in this book, right? And, and what's the yes. key takeaway if you had to pick one? Yeah, thanks, Javier. Just just really quickly, I wrote the book to be a resource for entrepreneurs. We just were in this position where I was seeing a lot of companies come to us to raise capital that just struggled with having the conversation with investors. And it was, you know, so it's, it's part textbook, you know, how to create a valuation for a private company, how to raise venture capital, how to go through diligence, how to structure deals, how to you know, manage investor relations, just really core stuff that I felt was really important. And now as we're seeing the maturation of the entrepreneurs in the sector, it's been, you know, really exciting to see. And then the first part of the book really took on a life of its own as I was trying to identify why there seemed to be such a lack of fidelity in the conversations between the investors and the entrepreneurs. And I believe it's, it's a lot because we refer to cannabis as an industry. So from our standpoint, we don't believe cannabis is an industry. We believe that cannabis is an economy. It's a global economy with subsectors mm -hmm. and industries within it, and it is here to be a part of our communities on the globe, on the planet for good. Now, there are subsectors and sub industries that are developing within that. And I have a personal challenge out there. So this was the phrase, the cannabis economy that we coined in the book or that I developed in the book. So I have a personal challenge out there. I believe that cannabis has reached the boardroom of every company of every industry full stop. So our <laughs> challenge is, if you can think of an otherwise incumbent industry that won't be impacted by legalization of cannabis, we will give you copies of the book. We'll give you an award. And we've actually set this up to preview. Uh, you're the first to hear. Um, we're launching our podcast at the end of this month, the Cannabis Capital Podcast, based on the story of the book. And if anybody wants to take up the challenge, just go to CannabisCapitalPodcast.com and right on the page, you can fill in. If you think there's an industry that otherwise won't be impacted by cannabis, I'd love to hear about it because I don't <laughs> believe there is one. Yeah, there is not. Fantastic. You're right Ross, that. We appreciate the generosity, man, of uh, this giveaway. Y'all, okay. take take part. This is actually a very, very informative book. I read it in my early days in being in this industry, and it was very informative for me, and I don't even have a business to get funded. So, <laughs> Ross, and, and now we know it's not an industry. It's an economy, right? <laughs> hey, there it is. <laughs> There it is. It but look, it, it's for it's for the entrepreneurs out there. So I really hope that they get value from it and always looking for great feedback or, you know, comments as people get into it. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course, Ross. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get you back on when thank your you. second fund launches. I would love to discuss that more in depth if possible. You guys know where to find me. I'd love to really, really like what you guys are doing over here. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Of course, Ross. Thank Thanks you. again, man. We'll see you soon. Right. Take care. Peace out. Fantastic. God, guys, what'd you think? Drop a one if you enjoyed the show. Juicy, Bonaventure Equity, book giveaway. Come on, participate. It's a it's free knowledge. Javier, back man. me up, dude. What are you doing? Come on. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. I just <laughs> want to go through. I, I'm focused on news. I want I want to give our audience more news. Right. I don't mind. Let's We're do going it. Let's over finish up. Let's do a minutes. little stock roundup. We have some stocks in the chat. Um, so we have, I've seen people say they're loading up on GRWG and CGC. Um, we, uh, no financial advice here. I completely agree with that action. 
<laughs> um, personally, I think both are incredibly strong plays. Many in this industry economy still think that as can as canopy growth goes, so does cannabis. I don't think it's that yeah. black and white anymore uh, because there are so there are more strong players now than there were a year ago, two years ago. But I still think CGC is an incredibly strong play, and this is a dip. By the way, uh, a shameless little plug here. Um, Benzinga has been a speaker at the last couple South by Southwest um, events. I got a panel last year. The, the year before that, I got to judge the pitch contest. This year, I'm, I'm nominated for two panels. One of them is uh, on cannabis and the future uh, with Canopy Growth. I'm going to drop the uh, links to both panels there. So anyone who's watching and want to vote for this panel to you know to make it a reality, the support will be appreciated. You can also find it on our socials to up upvote him. Uh, but please do. Javier deserves it. He's an incredible speaker, and he speaks it every major cannabis event out there. So please vote for him. Uh, October 14th and 15th, as mentioned, is our next cannabis capital conference in New York City. Canopy, True Leave, uh, Advisor Shares, your favorite ETFs, your favorite stocks to invest in, we'll all be there. Uh, we'll be streaming it on YouTube uh, and you can also buy a ticket to come in person. Uh, it's mm -hmm. going to be exciting. So um, we are looking at this here. We'll drop the links in the chat, Javi. Um, CGC, we've had a few requests for Sundial. We touched on them a couple weeks ago, or at least I think Patrick and I might have. I love mm -hmm. what they're doing with Sunstream, um, yeah. with that investment vehicle. Um, yeah. I think what they're doing there is incredibly intelligent. Indeed, yeah. And, and I think, you know, honestly, it, it's it's uh, it's a smart use of their money, right? They they had the, this moment in the sun, no pun intended, you know, and, and they took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Probably, I think, one of the more intelligent uh, results from meme stocks that I've seen. I, I mean, Super. I'm not going to yeah. say no, the they, most. They, they suddenly got a bunch of money and instead of squandering it, they invested it. Yeah. Uh, so Sundial, you guys, I think they have been brought back down to reality. And I think they're establishing some really strong groundwork, um, mm -hmm. you know, for, because they're, they're reaching into other parts of the industry within Diva. They, they just acquired um, a major retail brand in Canada. Um, they, they're doing, I think they're doing very well personally. A bunch of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Some other quick items, Verano Holdings. Verano, that's exactly right. Strong results, almost 200 million in revenue for Q2. Again, beating estimates, but almost by almost $5 million. They remain profitable and free cash flow positive. That is VRNOF on the OTC. Then there's a very interesting article on Benzinga.com slash cannabis that I think you need to check out. It's about the top 15 privately held cannabis companies and how much money they have raised. Guess what? These 15 companies have raised over $3 billion without going public. Do you want to know what they do? Who's investing in them, right? What, what they're doing right to get this money? Benzinga.com slash cannabis. Uh, very, very apt for our conversation today with Ross. Uh, we we got to go, y'all. But you know what? We'll get to Clover. Uh, we'll, we'll get to, or Clover Leaf, sorry, we'll get to nine and we'll talk more on Tilray. Um, I'm a big Tilray fan. I think they're bearish at the moment. There is some bearish sentiment on Tilray at the moment, yeah. but I mean, they are still the leader or one of the top five leaders globally in this economy, uh, of Canada. Yeah. So I By don't the way, think quick, quick response for Solar Up on Clever Leaves. Uh, they can export flour. The Colombian law just changed a couple of weeks ago. You heard it nice. in Cannabis Insider. So we'll come back to this, but yep. just All that's right. a quick answer. So Javier and Patrick will touch on it on Thursday from 4 to 5 Eastern. My last plug, and then we got to go. Cannabis Daily, you guys. I'm hosting a daily podcast you can find on Benzinga.com slash podcasts. Uh, I talk like three minutes. That's it. That's it. Three minutes every day on cannabis stocks. Yeah. Uh, so go give it a listen. Email cannabis hour at benzinga.com if you have any uh, requests, here, suggestions. Here's some great moments to listen to Elliot's Cannabis Daily podcast. Driving to work, going up or down the stairs in three minutes, going on the elevator. If you go to the toilet, just, I mean, it's not ideal, but you can do it. It's three minutes. And you get, okay. you know, the, the, the hottest stocks of the day, right? What's hot today? And you can learn about that very early in the day. Three yeah. minutes. Three yeah. minutes to make a profit. 
it's a no-brainer. You guys, we, we talk about it every day at 10 a.m. Benzinga.com slash podcast cannabis daily. Uh, until then, we'll see you Thursday. We'll see you next week. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you all so much for being here. Javier, as always, it's a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. See you Thursday. We'll <laughs>